ඔෆිස් එකේදි විතරක් නෙවෙයි මම දැන් ගෙදරදිත් IDD කෝස් ගන්න SLT ෆෝන් එකේ ඔබේ නිවසේ SLT දුරකථනය දැන් IDD පහසුකම සහිතයි Good evening tonight a red alert The Disaster Management Centre issues a landslide warning for Ratnapura and Kegol districts. Public requested to be vigilant of possible landslide. Decision time. Sri Lanka Freedom Party Central Committee meeting gets underway. 16 SLFB parliamentarians wait for approval to resign from their ministerial posts. Was it pre-planned? UBFA parliamentarian Vasudevan Anakar explains as to what happened to the no confidence motion which concluded few days ago. Prime Minister did not win this. He saved himself. And sorting out a mess. Minister of Local Government and Provincial Council Faisal Mustafa says that the government is in the process of solving issues with regard to women representation in local authorities. Most of the time women were represented from the opposition. So that is a dilemma that has to be addressed and we have to find a plausible mechanism to deal with it. And in international headlines an unspeakable disaster. 14 Syrians killed from a possible chemical attack. Russia says it's not the case. It's 9 o'clock on the dot. Welcome to First at 9, Other Dirana's premier English news coverage. Hello everyone, I'm Mahesh Joni. Tonight, later on in the show, we will have a full report on the situation in Syria after a chemical attack. But first, we begin here at home with our lead story and a warning from the Disaster Management Centre. The Disaster Management Centre, in a warning issued a few hours ago, says that people living in Ratnapura and Kegol districts should be vigilant of possible landslides due to heavy rains experienced in the past 24 hours. Its spokesperson, Pradeep Kudip Police, spoke to First at Nine with more details on this warning. There are a lot of uh, rain being recorded in Ratnapura and Kegol district uh, since this morning. And uh, some areas have been notified the more than 75 millimeters rain being reported. Some areas uh, almost reached up to the 100 millimeter level. So, uh, National Building and Research Organization, they have issued a warning on possibility of landslide in Ratnapura and Kegol district. Hmm? People need to be uh, vigilant with the uh, signs of the landslide. If any signs of the landslide being observed, they need to be take uh, immediate actions so for uh, moving uh, from those areas. Now, it could be a very decisive step by the SLFP that would determine as to how the government will continue in the next year and a half. The Sri Lanka Freedom Party is holding a decisive working committee meeting as we speak. The meeting which convened at 7 this evening is headed by President Maitripala Sirisena. First at 9, Shanala Fernando is at the President's official residence down Padgett Road in Colombo. Shanala, bring us up to date. Thank you, Mahesh. A special discussion is currently underway at the President's official residence here at Mahagama Sekara Road, where ministers and senior members of the SLFP arrived a short while ago to take part in this meeting. But we're hearing from the sources is that the meeting, the discussion is mainly focused on to determine whether the 16 SLFP members will vacate their ministerial positions or not. This situation arose mainly after them voting in favour of the recently concluded no confidence motion against Prime Minister Ranir Vikram Singh. Several UNP members were against the fact that they continue to be in the government and they also requested the President to remove them from their ministerial portfolios. So we await as to what the decision would be from the SLFP Central Committee and we will bring you the very latest as soon as we receive information. Thank you very much, Shanla. Now, prior to this meeting today, earlier on, the 16 SLFP members who supported the no-confidence motion held a discussion regarding their stance on the matter. During this discussion, it was decided that they will leave their ministerial positions and will continue to support the government in the backbenchers. The 16 SLFP ministers from the governing party who supported the no-confidence motion against Prime Minister Ranil Vikram Singh held a special discussion at the residence of State Minister Lakshman Yapa Abhivardhana today. They have decided to inform the SLFP Working Committee meeting of their decision to resign from their ministerial portfolios. However, they have also decided to stay in the SLFP while continuing their support for President Maitri Palasiri Sena. Meanwhile, views were expressed from different parties regarding the SLFP Working Committee meeting and the future of the national government. Mantoru visutundene ekatekadula tiindwagat konda keling tiagan 
23 parliamentarians made a strong decision to protect the president and 16 parliamentarians decided to support the no-confidence motion. So you do the math. <laughs> the restructuring of the SLFP has also begun and we will continue with it. We lost a no confidence motion against the Prime Minister, but we have achieved so much. The bomb that was set off still has its after effects. Under the leadership of former President Mahindra Rajapaksha, Sri Lanka Pojana Peramuna will take this country towards victory in the not so distant future. A group within the SLFP joined to defeat the UNP Prime Minister. The no confidence motion was brought in. I had already made up my mind, but all of these three parties offered me the position of the Prime Minister in exchange for my support. I am not a person who came to get the Premiership that way. I will not only protect this government, but also secure its win in 2020. Although the big names didn't realize it, even the common man understood that the defeat of Rani Vikramasinghe will mark the defeat of this government. No one who raised their hands in this betrayal can stay as a minister. For the first time, a group of 16 SLFP parliamentarians are requesting to join hands with the opposition by letting go of their ministerial positions and privileges. We are happy that they stand with the public's view. We hope to request the working committee to allow us to work by resigning from these ministerial positions. There is no problem in working together with them, but even if we resign, we will still be continuing as part of the SLFP. As a democratic and progressive leader, we trust the president will agree with the opinion of the public during the working committee meeting tonight. We will work as members of the SLFP. We won't leave the party or let it be weakened. Meanwhile, we were expressed by several politicians on the SLFP ministers who voted against the Prime Minister in the no-confidence motion. I don't really take notice of what the joint opposition says. They did what they wanted to do. Some members of the SLFP got caught to that as well. And because of that, the president is now in an awkward position. The UNP has the strength to continue as a single-party government. The parliamentarians who voted for the no-confidence motion have violated the collective responsibility. Therefore, it is not ethical for them to hold ministerial positions. As the joint opposition, we support any fraction who goes against the government. Those 16 SLFP members voted against the Prime Minister. They were supporting the President. Now all eyes are on the President to see what he does when the UNP presents their no-confidence motions against them. I made a firm decision. If we are to vote against the Prime Minister, we must resign from the government. I was ready for it. However, if we resign, there will be an all-UNP government. But that does not mean that we will let the culprits involved in the bond scam get away with what they have done. If anyone is representing the cabinet of ministers, they cannot go against the government. If they want to do so, they should resign. SLFP ministers and MPs who voted against the Prime Minister are ready to leave the government voluntarily. When they say they will leave, why do we see so much effort put into sending them by force? That will just aggravate the situation. This is not a good move. We have to be smart about it. More on the new confidence motion, leader of the Democratic Left Front and UPFA parliamentarian Vasudeva Nanayakara accuses that the Tamil National Alliance was influenced by external powers to come to the defense of the Prime Minister from a stand of neutrality. He made this comment at a media briefing held in Colombo today. The minister did not win this. He saved himself. There was the big capitalist class, the richer upper business houses, which were working over time together with international support from very powerful countries in order to persuade, pressurize the different groups to do the way they did. Particularly the TNA, they were one of those promises which are supposed to have been given according to Adekkalanad. I think it was more the pressures of big powers that made the TNA to become supportive of the Prime Minister from a stand of neutrality, which changed the entire Equilibrium. 
I don't think they can take any steps. They went and met the president and said, remove that. The president said, no. Said, if there is a cabinet reshuffle, let there be a total cabinet reshuffle. Let there be a committee to go into it. So it's very clear. The president had said that the UNP's request to have this minister to step down is refused. Already it is apparent that it is very superficial and uh, the actual antagonistic forces within the UNP who have long-standing grievances against the Prime Minister are unhappy that he remains the leader by virtue of the Constitution when it was decided that a total restructuring would take place, that anybody who is the Prime Minister or a President shall remain the party leader. Those are small clauses which can always be overcome by another resolution. If, if the will is there. In other local stories we have for you tonight, President Maitri Palasir Sen says that Sri Lanka's security forces must respect international agreements and carry out duties in line with those said agreements. He made this remark at a military passing out ceremony held in Madhuroya today. Seven officers and 189 others under various ranks who successfully completed the Special Infantry Operation course in the Army Training School at Madhuru Oil graduated in a colourful ceremony today. President Maitri Pala Sirisena attended the ceremony as the chief guest. We need to provide the necessary skills, knowledge and resources to our security forces to ensure that they are competent, especially in a world where other countries are more advanced militarily. Our security forces have gained the acceptance of the international community because of the respect extended to them by the United Nations. That is why the Sri Lankan government was able to send troops to the UN peacekeeping mission. We must always carry on with our responsibilities while adhering to international mutual agreements within the limits of our country's constitution and rule of law. Engineers Union of the Ceylon Electricity Board warns that the Ceylon Electricity Board might incur more than 50 billion rupees of losses within this year due to the government's failure to implement the proposed least cost long term power generation expansion plan to face the power crisis in the country. The Engineers Union points out that no other coal power plants have been established other than the Lakvijaya power station in Norachole. As a result of the prevailing dry weather conditions in the country, National hydroelectricity production has currently decreased to 15%. It is in this backdrop that all three units of the Norachulai coal power plant are continuously being used to contribute up to 45-50% to 50 to the national grid. Engineers Union of the Ceylon Electricity Board warns that there is a risk of necessary power cuts if the power plant breaks down as a result of continuous operations. After commissioning Norachulai power plant in 2014, not a single power plant which is able to give a solution to the existing crisis has added to our system. In 2015, the Sampur power plant was stopped. That was the only power plant uh, which was able to give a support to overcome this power crisis. That was about 500 megawatt power plant. Last year, uh, CEB lost about 40 billion rupees. This year also, we expect uh, the loss will be more than 50 billion and uh, that will be increased uh, in coming years. We are not even ready to start any large-scale, low-cost power plant in coming uh, five to six years. The Engineers' Union went on to say that it will resort to a strike action if the government does not implement the proposed least-cost long-term power generation expansion plan soon to fulfil the country's demand. Those people have purposely pushed us to a crisis situation and they are trying to add diesel power plants to the system. We don't have enough power to cater the demand of our nations. We have no other option than going for a stern trade union action against this issue. We will start it after 20th April. Meanwhile, responding to inquiries by First at Nine, an official from the Ministry of Power and Renewable Energy said that the proposed least cost long term power generation expansion plan has not yet been approved by the Public Utilities Commission of Sri Lanka in order to move forward with its implementation. 
Minister of Local Government and Provincial Councils, Faisal Mustafa, says that the government is in the process of sorting out issues with regard to women representation that arose in the aftermath of the recently concluded local government election. Speaking exclusively to First at Nine, the minister said that these matters will be ironed out by the next election. There were challenges with regard to women's representation because the opposition had more members to nominate. Because whoever wins the award, whether irrespective of whether it's a man or a female, that party nominee who won the award got it. Most of the time, women were represented from the opposition. So that is a dilemma. That has to be addressed and we have to find a plausible mechanism to deal with that. Other than how 15 councils, with regard to women's represent, 15 councils has a problem. Where majority, smaller parties have got representation. So the law says if any party receives less than 20% and has less than three members, they are not obliged to nominate a woman. So there is... Issues in that sense, but it's only with regard to 15 councils. Minister Mustafa said that before publishing the report, an all-party conference will be called to discuss the contents of the report and obtain their suggestions in order to minimise the number of revisions that could come up when the report is presented to Parliament. Provincial Council elections, I have the delimitation process is concluded. I have forwarded to Parliament. It was tabled in Parliament. Then all party leaders decided to defer it. Looking at how the local government elections, plus there, the pluses there, the minuses there, the changes there, we don't want to repeat the same mistakes there. So it is up to Parliament, the legislature, to make whatever changes and people can't point the finger at me because it has been a practice for anything to point the finger at Faisal Mustafa. Minister of National Coexistent Dialogue and Official Languages Manu Ganeshan says that he will bring the 21st Amendment to the Constitution of Sri Lanka to read as Singhala and Tamil languages shall be the official languages of Sri Lanka. He made this remark this morning addressing the media after launching a hotline number to receive complaints on violations of the official languages policy. Ministry of National Coexistence, Dialogue and Official Languages opened its Languages Call Centre this morning and the hotline number is 1956. Other than the hotline number, people also can connect with the Languages Centre via WhatsApp, Viber and Emo, dialing 0714-854-734. We have today established a call centre with very modern technological basis. Now you can make your complaints to this call centre through Viber, through WhatsApp, through Emo. Also, we have a Facebook account by the name of Language Rights, in addition to the traditional hotline 1956. Minister Garnison also said that instead of waiting for the new constitution to be established, he will propose a 21st amendment to the present constitution. Let the new constitution come sometime in the future. I hope I am part of the sharing committee, but I don't want to wait until then. Right now, we have this language rights law in the present constitution. The present constitution says, in one line, says, Singhala shall be the official language of Sri Lanka. Second sentence says, Tamil also shall be the official language of Sri Lanka. I would like to bring an amendment to the constitution as the 21st amendment, because I leave the 20th number for my good friends of JVP. They wanted to bring a constitutional amendment for on the executive presidency. The 21st amendment would like to be would, would propose saying that my proposal would be Singhala and Tamil shall be the official language of Sri Lanka. That is bringing both languages within one sentence instead of taking se talking separately. So The newly appointed chairperson of the National Child Protection Authority, attorney at law H. M. Aberatna, assumed duties this morning. Speaking to media, the chairperson vowed to do much more for children in order to have the, uh, to them to have a brighter future. The newly appointed chairperson of the National Child Protection Authority assumed duties this morning following religious rituals. First, uh, we have to understand what is the situation taking place at the moment. Then after that only we can go forward. And uh, on behalf of the children in Sri Lanka, I'll try my level best to do something better, much more than at present. I'm um, expecting to get the quality. Actually, money is not the problem at all, but the thing is the attitude. And uh, if we can uh, change the attitude towards that the better uh, future, I hope that the really he may support us uh, through the uh, Daruan Surakimo in uh, national program. You are watching Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Other Dharana 24-7.
On to business news now, State Minister of Finance Iran Vikramaratna says that Sri Lanka received a record-breaking 1.9 billion US dollars in foreign direct investments last year, which is four times the amount compared to 2016, where Sri Lanka recorded 450 million US dollars in FDIs. He added that the government hopes to cross the 2.5 billion US dollar mark in FDIs by the end of the year. According to the Ministry of Finance, Sri Lanka received foreign direct investment worth 970 million US dollars and 450 million US dollars in 2015 and 2016 respectively. However, Sri Lanka was able to receive FDIs worth 1.9 billion US dollars last year, breaking the previous record of 1.7 billion rupees in 2014. Sri Lanka's savings rates have traditionally been very low. It's been like 14, 15, 16 percent of GDP, while uh, countries in the region have much higher savings rates, like India over 30, 35 percent, China over 50 percent of GDP. So we've always depended on foreign direct investment to propel our growth. And in 2015, we were about $970 million of foreign direct investment, and then it went down to about half of that in 2016. And in 2017, we have got $1.9 billion, the highest ever recorded foreign direct investment in this country, $1.9 billion. That includes $300 million, which came as a result of the transaction for the Hambantota port. But if you take that out, it's still $1.6 billion of foreign direct investment. It has come in many different ways into many different sectors. We are hoping that in this coming year, 2018, that that will cross the $2 billion mark and move towards $2.5 billion. Uh, so the policy framework needs to improve. And there are lots of improvements that can still be made. For example, in getting a land, in registering a company, in getting an environmental impact assessment, these things could be done more efficiently and more quickly. Let's take you to the stock market now. The All Share Price Index touched its lowest close in 11 weeks, pulled down by blue chip stocks in a moderate turnover. The Colombo Stock Index ended 0.38% down at 6,431.1. The turnover stood at 679.7 million rupees, below this year's daily average of around 1.2 billion rupees. Here is Imeshi Fernando from the Colombo Stock Exchange for more details. The turnover was 679.68 million rupees, with 7.8 million shares changing hands in 2,739 trades. The market capitalization at the end of the day was 3,010.55 billion rupees. Today's foreign purchases were 527.58 million rupees, and foreign sales were 425.25 million rupees. There were six crossings today, and the crossing turnover was 569.56 million rupees. While well, making headlines around the world, at least 14 people have died and more hurt after a Syrian military airport was hit by missiles today amid global alarm over a suspected chemical attack on rebel-held town. The attack hit the TRZ air base known as T4 near the city of Homs. Videos released on the internet purport to show the lifeless bodies of men, women and children, some of them with foam at the mouth after a chemical attack against a besieged rebel-held town in Syria where medical aid groups reported more than 50 people killed by poison gas. Meanwhile, Syrian state TV said there were casualties in what it said was a suspected U.S. missile attack at the T-4 airfield near Homs. U.S. President Donald Trump and France's President Emmanuel Macron issued a joint statement yesterday vowing to coordinate a strong joint response to the alleged attack. Trump said there would be a big price to pay after the chemical attack in Douma. He even went on to brand Syria's President Bashar al-Assad an animal. But both the U.S. and France have said they did not launch the attack. Later, the Syrian government and its ally Russia blamed Israel for the deadly attack. Syrian state news agency Sana 
Quoting a military source reported that air defenses had repelled an Israeli missile attack on T-4, saying the missiles were fired by Israeli F-15 jets in Lebanese airspace. However, Israel has neither confirmed nor denied the accusation. Meanwhile, the first batch of freed hostages from the rebel-held Syrian city of Douma arrived at an army-controlled crossing yesterday in the first phase of a far-reaching deal to evacuate thousands of rebels to northern Syria. A Russian-sponsored deal gives safe passage to rebels out of their last bastion near Damascus in return for rebel group Jaish al-Islam releasing hundreds of hostages and prisoners of war. Well, 20 school, uh, 27 school children have been killed when the school bus they were traveling in skidded and fell into a 100-foot gorge in Himachal Pradesh's Kangar district. Many of them who were in the bus today were in grade 5 and below. The bus belonging to a private school overturned at, as it slipped into the gorge and came to rest in the middle of the hillside. The police said that the bus driver could have been speeding on the narrow hill road before he lost control. Off the bus. Our sports news is on the other side of this break. Stay with us. You are watching Sri Lanka's award winning news channel, Other Verena 24 7. On to sports now, Minister of Sports Dasiri Jayasekara ceremoniously opened the newly laid synthetic track at the Sukhothadasa Stadium today. The opening also saw the minister trying his hand at the discus throwing event. Sri Lanka's premier sporting complex, Sukhothadasa Stadium, which underwent a mega refurbishment, had its newly laid synthetic track ceremoniously opened today by the Minister of Sports Dasiri Jayasekara, attended by several other politicians as well. The stadium was neglected over the years despite it being the hub for many of the sporting disciplines in the country. The artificial running track was marked unsafe due to the deteriorating conditions of the matting. While the renovation work at the venue commenced early last year, the relaying of the synthetic track only commenced in mid-September last year due to complications that arose in handing over the tender to the development company. The track was ceremoniously opened with a girls and boys invitational relay which received the start mark by the minister himself. Gateway College girls team earned the bragging rights to claim the first victory at the newly laid track with Lyceum Vattala and Dharmapala Vidyalaya girls teams winning the second and third places respectively. In the boys' invitational event, Marastala College Nigambo was the first to the finish line with St. Peter's College and St. Benedict's College finishing in second and third respectively. Minister Jasekra then went on to try a throw at the discus throwing area, reminiscing the old days where he himself had reportedly been a keen thrower. The fifth day of the Commonwealth Games 2018 concluded today at Gold Coast in Australia. In the men's 100-metre sprint, South Africa's Akani Simbini won gold as he finished the race in 10.3 seconds. Meanwhile, in the women's 100-metre sprint, Michelle Lee from Trinidad and Tobago won gold, finishing the race in 11.14 seconds. In the high jump event, Sri Lanka's Manjula Kumara advanced to the final after clearing a height of 2.21 meters Michelle A.E. gets away to a very good start. The challenge, though, comes on the inside lane coming from Khalifa St. Fort, but it will be, in fact, the athlete from Trinidad and Tobago. Evans, third place. That's all you can do. Well, Royal Challengers Bangalore suffered a four-wicket defeat against Kolkata Knight Riders in their first encounter of the 2018 Indian Premier League at Eden Gardens yesterday. Sunil Narin blazed a 17-ball 50, becoming the highest contributor for the Knight Riders. We are at the iconic Eden Gardens in Kolkata. Batting first, Royal Challengers Bangalore were held by contributions from Brendan McCollum and Mr. 360 A.B. de Villiers, scoring 43 and 44 respectively. High in the air off the top edge, who wants it on? Mandeep Singh chipped in with a valuable 18 ball 37, helping RCB post 176 for 7 in their lot of 20 overs. Lovely hands there, Andre Russell. Having been set a daunting target of 177, 
Kolkata Knight Riders chased down the target with seven balls to spare. Sunil Narayan was a top scorer for KKR with a quick-fire half-century, while Dinesh Karthik got a valuable 35, guiding his team towards victory. The game is convincing. It really, really is. KKR win by four wickets. Here's Katharina Chang with the weather. A very good evening and welcome to Forecast First. Now, temperatures will range between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius over the course of the day, with a low pressure zone to be expected in the northern region of the island as well as in the vicinity of Sri Lanka. This could move inwards uh, during the day, and we could expect some thunder showers in the areas of Waunia, Mana, Jaffna, and Trincomalee. And if you move downwards, we can expect some thunder showers in the areas of Kandy, Colombo, and Gaul. That is it from your weather centre tonight. Up next is your city by city forecast. And that is a part of your world tonight right here on Other Than 24-7. I'm Mahesh Johnny. First at 9, we'll return tomorrow at the same time. Be sure to join us then. Before we wrap things up for tonight, we'd like to take you over Sri Lanka with visuals that captured the country's beauty from above. Thank you very much for joining us. Good night. and information 24 hours a day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel. Other Varana, 24-7.